So let's look at the physiological changes in pregnancy. We come to the danger signs of pregnancy later. So there are physiological, very chemical, and anatomical changes that occur during pregnancy. And these changes may be systemic or local. Most of the systemic changes return to pre-pregnancy status six weeks after delivery. All these changes occur during pregnancy to maintain a healthy environment for the fetus without compromising the mother's health and also prepare for the process of delivery and care of the newborn. So, genetic changes for the gastrointestinal tract. So there are nutritional requirements including vitamins and minerals and um, these are increased so the mother's appetite usually increase pregnant women tend to rest more often i'm conserving energy to enhance fetal nutrition and there is increased salivation and uh, hypertrophy of gum which may easily bleed Gastrointestinal mobility may be reduced due to increased um, progesterone and decreased hormone to stimulate smooth muscles in the gastrointestinal tract. So the gastric emptying is slowed. And similarly, in other parts of the gastrointestinal tract, constipation due to increased water absorption. The stomach um, production of gastric acid decrease and mucus production is increased decreasing pH so due to the peptic ulcer uh, usually improve or disappear because of these changes during pregnancy but um, during the pregnancy because of the enlarging uterus heartburn is um, very common due to gastric reflux enlarging um, Gastric reflux from the enlarging uterus and this slows um, emptying time and increase in gastric pressure. The anatomical positions of the intestines change because of the enlarging uterus too. The liver, the, there are no morphological changes. And then there are functional changes. Um, there is decreased plasma protein or albumin and globulin. Um, this globulin is also synthesized by the liver. There is increased serum alkaline phosphatase activity. In gallbladder, the progesterone um, decreases motility. There is a decrease in teen time of bowel stasis and also stone formation or infection could occur. Okay. Progesterone decreases motility and this in turn leads to a decrease in um, teen time of bowel and that may lead to stasis, leading to stone formation or infection. Urin um, urinary tract, um, each kidney increase in length and also in weight. The renal pelvis and ureter dilate and lengthen. So there is an increased urinary stasis, um, and this increases the risk of infection and stone formation. So the renal pelvis and ureter dilate and lengthens, and there is an increased urinary stasis. Okay, so for the renal function, change occurred due to increased maternal and placental hormones, the ACTH, um, ADH, cortisol, and several hormones. Too. There is an increase in plasma volume. So the GFR um, increased, but the water absor reabsorption does not. And this leads to an increase in urine glucosuria it may okay but the bladder there is this it's displaced upward and anteriorly by the um, enlarging uterus and due to this there's an increased pressure leading to urinary frequency and agency hematologically there's an increase in blood volume and most striking change um, the change occurs until term and the average increase in volume is about 45 to 50 percent. The mechanism for increasing the volume of blood is not well understood, although strong related factor um, 
during pregnancy may also contribute to this effect and also um, as it leads to an increase in water and salt retention wherever salt goes water flows okay so rbc is increased by 33 percent and iron need increases because of the increase in red blood cell mass and that is why iron supplementation is necessary during pregnancy um the bbc's or the white blood cell counts are usually increased the platelets and clotting factors also increase in production but the for the cardiovascular system, the heart slightly shifts in position due to the enlarging uterus, and also, um, so basically, the enlarging uterus um, presses on the diaphragm and leads to a displacement. Um, it displaces the diaphragm upward, and that leads to a shift of the apex beat. Cardiac output increase um, to about. 30 to 50 percent during pregnancy and the peak is raised at 20 to 24 weeks of gestation and then remain constant until term during um, early pregnancy the stroke volume is increased by 25 to 30 um, percent with heart rate increased by 15 percent the blood pressure systemic blood pressure declines slightly during pregnancy and there is little change in systolic blood pressure but um, diastolic blood pressure decreased by five, by 5 to 10 um, millimeters mercury so there is little change in the systolic but diastolic is decreased by 5 to 10 millimeters mercury from 12 to 26 weeks and then there's an increase in non-pregnant levels by 10 a venous pressure there is no change in the upper body, but there is an increase in the lower extremities, um, lower extremi extremities enlarged, and there is a decrease in venous return to the heart, and this increases the pressure and results in edema. Okay, let's look at the lungs pulmonary changes. So capillary dilatation occurs in the respiratory roots. And then so pharynx, the larynx, trachea, bronchi. And so it makes breathing difficult through the nose. And then large it just pushes the diaphragm and the lungs as well. Functional respiratory changes include a slight increase in the respiratory rate. So 50% increase in minute ventilation. And also 40% increase in minute um, tidal volume. There's progressive increase in oxygen consumption. As 15 to 20 percent above non pregnant level by 10. Okay, so the breast and skin changes. The breast increases in size with enlargement of the nipple and increased vascularity and pigmentation of areola. So skin hyperpigmentation over some parts of the body, um, the face, the forehead, and the cheek. That's what we call um, plasma. The abdomen, the sub umbilical midline, there's a dark purplish pigmentation of linear alba, which turns into linear nigra. It's stressed mainly from the symphysis to the epigastrum. There is also trigravidarium. Okay, so due to the enlarging abdomen, there is stress on the collagen fibers of the skin due to the effects of ACTH. Okay, let's look at the vagina and the uterus. So the vagina there's an increase in capacity and the length um the length secondary to hypertrophy of the lining epithelium and also the muscle layer. Increased glycogen content in the wall secondary to the effect of estrogen increases vascularity and changes the color to purple and the food also increases by ten. The uterus upper parts of the fundus and the body, the upper part of the fundus and the body changing to the upper uterine segment, the lower part of the cervix and the isthmus um, change to the lower uterine segment. And the weight increases from 60 um, 
milligrams to one kilogram at ten with a volume ten mils to five liters. So long. So basically, that's the physiological changes in pregnancy. Okay, let's look at diagnosis of pregnancy. So pregnancy is mainly diagnosed from the symptoms reported by the woman and signs elicited by us or the healthcare provider. So the signs and symptoms of pregnancy, these signs and symptoms are divided into three, the presumptive, probable, and positive signs. So the presumptive or the possible signs are the early breast changes. There's an increase in size, darkening of the areola, presence of Montgomery tubercles, okay, amenorrhea in women having a regular cycle without the use of hormonal contraceptives. Also, there is morning sickness and vomiting. Then, bladder irritability like frequency of nutrition. Quickening, that's a date of first fetal movement filled by the mother and it provides an indication of pregnancy. A primary gravid feels it around 18 to 20 weeks, while a multi gravid 14 to 16 weeks. The probable signs of pregnancy you have the presence of HCG in blood, urine, um, and also there's uterine growth. Braxton hex contractions. There's also balotment. That's a, these are the probable signs of pregnancy. The positive signs when there's visualization of the uterus by um, ultrasound, ultrasonography. That's six weeks of gestation. X rays are not normally used, but X rays could detect it after 12 weeks of gestation. And also fetal heart sounds by ultrasound and fetoscope. Or fetal stethoscope between 20th and 24th weeks of gestation when there is fetal movement by palpation or visible fetal movement okay so some few disorders of pregnancy noise and vomiting um, this presence between the between 4 to 12 weeks of gestation so hormonal influences are listed as the most likely causes it usually occurs in the morning, but can occur any time during the day. It's normally aggravated by smelling of food. In management, you just reassure the mother you frequent, um, you give frequent um, meals, dry meals, and reduce fatty and fried <laughs> containing foods, and also rest to health. Okay, let's look at heart burns. This is a burning sensation in the midst of the chest region. And progesterone. Basically realizes the cardiac sphincter of the stomach, as I said earlier, and allows for the reflux of um, gastric contents into the esophagus. The heart burns is mostly troublesome around 30 to 40 weeks gestation. Because of because at this stage, um, there's pressure from the growing uterus. Management you just um, advise the patient to use more infrequent is to take in more frequent meals and to sleep with more pillows than usual or for persistence or severe you give antacid like plain neutral longer days so this others of pregnancy let's look at pica is this a term used when women or mothers crave certain foods of unnatural substances such as coal soil the cause is basically unknown but hormones and changes in metabolism are blamed you just seek um, medical advice if the substance cra craved is potentially harmful to the unborn baby. Constipation. Basically, progesterone, like I said, causes relaxation of the um, sphincters. So there, there is a decrease in motility. That there is decreased peristaltic activity of the gut, and this um, is also displaced by the growing fetus. It has increased the intake of water, fresh fruits, vegetables, refugees, and diet. And exercise is also helpful, especially walking. Well, there is also backache or lower back pains too. 
a hormones um sometimes so thin soften the um, segments to such a degree that some support is also needed the management um, you advise the mother to sleep on a firm bed and also advise support mechanisms of the back fainting in early pregnancy fainting may be due to vasodilatation or carrying under the influence of progesterone because um it is a compensatory mechanism so so this is due to as fainting or presyncope or syncope it is an influence of the progesterone before um an increase in the blood volume or if there is an increase in the blood volume it just serves as a compensation mechanism and the weight of the uterine contains presses on the um, the weight of the uterine contains basically presses on the inferior of the cover and slows the return of blood to the heart and when that occurs the body will just try to compensate by um, decreasing blood basically get the patient in a vertical form for gravity to act on for blood to flow um, to all the parts of the body importantly the brain so the management you just avoid long periods of standing you sit or lie down when you feel slight dizziness and also you advise the patient not to lie on her back except during abdominal examination at this other disorders include varicosities so the progesterone like i said it relaxes the smooth muscles of the vein and results in sluggish circulation so the valves of the dilated vessels becomes insufficient and varicosities results and because it occurs in the legs or anus as hemorrhoids and the vulva the management is just exercise the calf muscles Rising on the toes, you elevate the leg and rest on the table, support the thighs and legs, avoid constipation, and advise um, adequate fluid intake. Sanitary pad may also support the uh, will support vulval varicosities. Okay, and as we've seen so far, the dangerous, dangerous signs of pregnancy always remember if there is vaginal bleeding, you have to move straight to the hospital. Reduce fetal movement, frontal or recurring headaches, sudden swelling or edema, rupture of membranes, um, premature onset of contractions, and also maternal anxiety. For whatever reasons, you have to move straight to the hospital for an emergency procedure to be done.